So today we have with us a wonderful guest, uh, which is a great honor for me because he's also a dear friend uh, of all of us, uh, and it's uh, Tsune Imada. And uh, Tsune is a Japanese bartender that is based in New York, uh, one of the great ones that has the, you know, again, um, angel share. That bar, New York man, City. That bar. Amazing. Angel pieces champs, man. <laughs> so Tsune, <laughs> welcome to the show. Thank you so much for inviting me. All right, all right. I would hit the clap button, but I don't remember which one it is. <laughs> 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 we can give it a shot, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that it's... It's um, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It's like putting a little bomb. Wrong one. There we go. Oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> That's what I get. That's what I get. <laughs> Darnell forgot his headphones, so he's kind of like imaginarily. <laughs> yeah, I'm hearing see the that. imaginary Listening. crowd. I'm yeah. hearing the imaginary womp womp. Not that it wasn't imaginary <laughs> to begin oh, with. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, uh, Sune, could you um, uh, share with, with us, with our audience, a little bit about you? Who are you? What do you do? Uh, all that good stuff. Absolutely. Okay. My pleasure to introduce myself. My name is Tsune Taka Imada. If I can say Japanese, Konnichiwa Imada Tsune Taka desu. So Tsune, uh, yeah. how long have you been in New York? Oh, I've been in New York City uh, three and a half years. I just uh, came for uh, doing the bartending because I've been bartending in Japan kind of around 10 years. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, I felt kind of a little stuck in Japanese bartending. It's just only in Japan. I just want to spread out my Japanese bartending techniques and to the world to for the working as uh, the one of the best bar. Yeah, uh, yeah. And their share. Angel share. <laughs> that's <laughs> right, that's right. It is yeah. one of the best. Yeah. One of the best. Did you did you start at Angel Share when you first came over? Yeah. So yeah. you came straight from Japan into Angel Share. Yes. Yes. That's that's a, I mean, when you're 10 years strong in the industry, you know, there's definitely this kind of uh, unspoken kind of like, you got the season, you know, like, you can't end up at something like that. You yeah, know? absolutely, absolutely. Like, that's dope, dude. That's yeah, dope. absolutely. That's uh, and now, you, you have, you have, uh, uh, are you married? Are you, do you have kids? Do you have a, a dog? Uh, What's your situation here? What's your personal life like? Tell me. Our, our, like, our lady like viewers, <laughs> our, our, our lady viewers yeah. and, and male viewers are also interested in <laughs> okay. your personal life. I'm interested in know. What's the Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Should I say this? Should. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I got married. I, I got married in the beginning of this year. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations, man. Yeah. yeah. So far, we don't have a kid, but we just spend the time together. It's just for enjoying That's our good. time first. That's, That's awesome. Good. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Has this uh, COVID situation been been difficult for you, just like everybody else, I imagine? Yeah, I can tell this is a super difficult timing for us, even the this industry, because we kind of stuck to selling the cocktail in front of the customer. We can't make customer in front of customer, which is our kind of specific point. Right. But we just uh, try to be the selling the to-go cocktail. This is kind of the four-hour industry. It's kind of biggest problem. and. The yeah, family. We've been we've been super fine. We can we can just have a lot of time to talk to each other. We know each other well more than before. That's so awesome. Yeah, oh, that's great. That's awesome. I imagine it creates just a, a much more tighter. You know, it's already a small gr uh, small team, mm -hmm. but it must make you m guys much closer then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And on the personal life, either you get closer together or you get a divorce, right, at the end of this COVID thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It could drive anybody <laughs> insane. <laughs> it's 50-50, man. It's 50-50. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. yeah. it's a it's wild bet. It's a wild bet. Yeah. I mean, just so we've, we've been there fighting a, lot, a little bit and then just uh, kind of get like, along with a lot. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. So it's yeah. more of the positive. It's yeah. more of the yeah. positive. Yeah. Like, listen, you're only human. Uh, there's only so many times that, you know, you can, you can uh, uh, clash with your mate, with your, you know, whatever. Um, with your spouse, and and um, if it's more of the positive, then it just means that you guys have a solid foundation. So we, w I wish you the best of um, in your marriage, and um, whenever you guys have kids, I mean, I know you personally, and you're awesome. So I think you're gonna be a great dad. So um, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun for. Isn't that necessarily great person? Would be great dad though. 
Yeah. True, yeah. true, true. Yeah. You could possibly suck as a dad. <laughs> I, I was, that. I was saying yeah, something positive. Thanks for the compliments, but I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't have much hope for myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's like, uh, you know, there's some stuff you really don't yeah. know. Yeah. He's yeah. like, how well do you know me? Yes, yeah. exactly. exactly. <laughs> you may want to, you may want to not put a bet on that one, Dave. Um, so, but going back to the topic, um, you mentioned something, which is that with this COVID situation, you can't. Uh, you've been selling to go, and you couldn't can't really do the service the japanese style yeah. service which is all about being in front of the guests being in the moment so <coughs> let's get down to it tell us a little bit more about the japanese technique yeah. what's so cool about it why is everybody so fascinated by it mm. yeah first of all japanese bartending we focus on the what to say kind of the hidden service you know what i'm saying it's mm -hmm. not like obvious service hey what's up hey how are you doing so we don't do that that much thing mm. We just uh, kind of follow the customer's feeling, try to win. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, awesome. so in a sense, it's like uh, it's like trying to do more like intuitive hospitality. It's like trying to not be front and center, but mm -hmm. more of like a background movement to it. Yeah, exactly. For example, David, Daniel, you you came my bar the first time. I look your eyes. Oh, Daniel, kind of depressed. Even though he's super lock and loud. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> 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 I mean, yo, dogs, yeah. like, yeah, we're going to get into this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, because some, some Japanese customer doesn't say they are feeling well because sure. they came for a kind of the expectation that a little bit, but they don't tell me. That's why we have to the consider what you feel, what you think now. Oh, maybe you want to go for something fruity, you want to go for something refreshing. Oh, David looks so fun. Maybe he got a good job today. So I'm going to get you your kind of happiness mood cocktail or something like this. This is a totally a what I'm concerned. It first, I get the job. That's yeah. awesome. So yeah. there you have it, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Japanese bartenders are psychics. <laughs> and <laughs> you said it here first. <laughs> you, you heard, you it, heard here it here first. Yeah. Exclusive. Exclusive. Uh, Exclusive. Uh, um, but it's, it's awesome because it means that um, what's interesting about everything you said is that it's more than just an experience that it's about seeing how I make the drink. It's really about making sure that there's a, 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 a Zen, a, a Feng Shui, a, a, an exchange of energy mm -hmm. that you can read and that you want to feed into to either mm -hmm. bring them out of it or help them keep celebrating it, right? So Yeah, yeah, it's got both feeling. Actually, the everyone has a different feeling to first time get in the bar. But some, some people has a happiness, some people has a sadness. Mm -hmm. So we have to follow the both of thing too, mm -hmm. not necessarily only the given the happy. Sometimes it gets you to some sadness and the follow the sad. Right. This, this is the kind of. You mentioned, because like, I, I guess another question just kind of popped into my mind about this. Like, was this style uh, kind of like inspired or created because specifically Japanese culture, like how uh, like societal culture over there because you may, I think you made a mention of just how like a normally like a Japanese guest or something doesn't really right. like come more in. private and like they're more mm -hmm. private they're more quiet so they're not really expressing themselves to you so is that exactly was that like kind of a reactive having to be that mm -hmm. way with it yeah this is a this is a point that I was saying about this kind of I don't I don't know just just let's say we're if we are shy we can't express ourselves well because we really don't get used to the present some in front of someone to for our feeling too. That's why maybe a lot of people is keep quiet, mm -hmm. maybe in front of people too. Not like not like to express yourself that a lot as much as you can. Not like that. So um, it's great to hear this about Japanese uh, bartending, right? Mm -hmm. um, but there's also something that you're known for when it comes to Japanese style of bartending, which is the technique, the application of technique. Tell us a little bit more about it. Okay, Japanese technique, Japanese bartending techniques. The first of all, we use a different tool, which is a three-piece three shaker. So especially the American bartending, we use it, the, the what's it's called? Two-piece uh, Boston, two, Boston shaker. Yeah, Boston, Boston shaker, shaker yeah. yeah. But we don't use a Boston shaker because we just uh, believe our classic cocktail has to be sophisticated, has to be the aeration inside. That's why we use a three-piece shaker to make cocktail more aeration inside. Mm -hmm enough dilution and uh, not to break the ice cube inside the shaker because shaker is round right oh, so like I it, so whereas i often you know when i've been doing my workshop classes and stuff like that and we talk about the, the 
Boston Shakers. We tell them to create contact and go to in with the ice. Uh, so then in your case, you're saying a cobbler shaker, a three-piece shaker because it's rounded. Mm -hmm. The ice is more rolling in around inside versus mm -hmm. like mashing or yeah. smashing into each side. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, truly the Boston Shaker, the ice movement is uh, kind of one direction. Mm -hmm. Like get in the bottom and right. back to the top. But three piece shaker, we can just make ice cube to move like kind of multiple way. You sometimes get in only kind of slightly circle, and sometimes the change of this circle that makes structure more complex. Right. Yeah. Right. Because we have we have talked about it on the show where water is one of the ingredients that you put in the cocktail. Right. So it's about mm -hmm. how you introduce that water right. in an effective right. way. So right. So right. So that makes sense that. With that, you know, I actually thought about when you mentioned the three piece shaker and about it being a classic. And just a fun fact, I don't know if you guys know this, but it's no lie, a new piece of history I learned for myself mm -hmm. that it's it was called a cobbler shaker, or rather the cocktail, because it was the shaker that was used for the first ever kind of sour mm -hmm. made ever. And the first sour was a cobbler cocktail. Oh, wow. And uh, like a sherry cobbler, if you may have heard of it, it was usually like sherry, <coughs> some like acidity, and it was with that three piece mm -hmm. was kind of like the original shaker, mm -hmm. which uh, I always found interesting that at some point in American bartending, we just went from like a glass and a mixed bin. Yeah. And in Japanese style, you guys are really going traditional with it. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, um, it, you know, it might, it might be worthwhile to, to show a little demo of the Japanese heart shake, right? Because mm -hmm. that's part of a Japanese heart shake is this concept of having the ice travel the cobbler, right? Mm -hmm. um, not just the hard end-to-end mm -hmm. -end that we see in the Boston. Um, and of course, this is by cobbler, I mean the three-piece, right? It's just kind of easily uh, interchangeable sometimes, but oh they don't yeah, have absolutely. to be, right? Mm -hmm. so, um, uh, but aside from the shaking, there's also um, something very, very, there's something about precision in Japanese bartending that we see a lot at English Share, bartenders like yourself, where uh, there's a precise measure, a precise way to pour, mm -hmm. and everything looks very, very clean, right? Mm -hmm. It's one stage going into another. I mean, just uh, the based on Japanese culture, the we kind of like we recognize Japanese bar as a the high end place because the people not necessarily to go to the bar to get the drink because p we have a bunch of izakaya style already. You know, it's the uh, kind of the place serving the cocktail, not not like cocktail like a kind of drinks and the beer, the shochu, sake, we have a bunch of the drinks mm -hmm. we can enjoy. Then uh, people having the kind of small bite, they having the small, the beer, sake, can be enjoy the place only. And then kind of the more extended people is getting the bar. That's why our bar is not like super busy like here. So it's it's not about volume. Mm -hmm. Now, not like the big volume bar we have in Japan. So that's why every bartender can be focused on the making the cocktail for uh, just based on single movement. Okay. Yeah. For example, the pour. When you pour, the focus on pour. We staring, focus on stare. Doesn't speak out. Mm. Yeah. Just uh, pulling the ice cube inside shaker. We focus on the pulling the ice cube inside a shaker, nothing to do, anything else. It sounds, it sounds to me a lot like in Japanese culture or, in j or even Japanese bartending that the overall hospitality is literally driven by how you guys make the cocktail. Mm -hmm. So it's like even in your version of what you're saying is like what high volume would be in Japan versus mm -hmm. here, like mm -hmm. say New York City, like even high volume is still like funneled slowly so that the guests are not like rushed into mm -hmm. it and and it gives you time to put in literal focus on every action you're taking for the cocktail which is kind of mind-boggling because i spent my entire career most of the times uh, fighting for the concept mm -hmm. of it's hospitality first cocktail second mm -hmm. uh and for my own right theory, right because right. this is mm -hmm. how right. i grew up in it I in see, new I york see. city because it was it always believed that the environment um, a, of which that you're enjoying the cocktail, that the cocktail would be that cherry on top mm -hmm. for something that's already a really great place to be at. So I like my jaw is kind of on the ground and hearing that it's like entirely driven by just the cocktail. Mm -hmm. That's ill. 
mean, yeah, maybe for Japanese bartending, include everything. We recognize this as a hospitality. So kind of the try to make a character in front of you, one by one, just taking the time for you. Right. This, this right. is our hospitality, too, instead of the we express ourselves. You did make a mention of, like, wanting to leave after 10 years in Japan, wanting to leave to to kind of express to the world mm-hmm. a little bit more about that style. Mm-hmm. Is there anything more on top of that that you felt was like your motivating mm-hmm. factor? Like why you chose to be like, I'm gonna go do this. I see, I see. So first of all, I just wanted to make my cocktail to the lot of person. So that's why I picked New York City. We have the lot of, we can have a b- bunch of customer in front of us. So then uh, everyone knows the my cocktail, the, I mean our cocktail to the spread the, the other world too. And then Finally, every people in the world knows kind of one place or which is good. Or just like, oh, they're serving the great cocktail, they're serving the great hospitality. If we're going to be recognized as that, yeah, that'd be it. so great. Got it, got it. Um, <coughs> across your, your travels here in the U.S., um, mm-hmm. you've seen a lot of bartenders. You're, you're in competitions. As a matter of fact, you are the U.S. finalist for Bacardi Legacy. Um, I so uh, <laughs> that COVID postponed the global finals but mm-hmm. um you're gonna get back into the swing of things because i believe in 2021 they're gonna mm-hmm. hold the finals that were supposed to take place oh, that's this awesome. year so congratulations first and foremost thank you so much so let's uh, let, let me just real quick point out that's 10 years in japan already crushing it comes down to new york city works at one of the best cocktail bars in new york city and then within just three years of that is now the U.S. champion. Like, <laughs> hope he's not his <laughs> Like, he literally came out with your sword, bro. Like, what is this? <laughs> it's like, so y'all, y'all ain't ready. Uh, Yo, we were ready. not. We were not. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but um, throughout the competitions, uh, throughout your travel, um, is, there, is there something that you've observed as the greatest area of opportunity for American bartenders? You know, obviously, you have a different lens looking at things. You can learn from your travels. But you can also see things that you would like you, you would love to tell maybe an American bartender that's starting to bartend or maybe even a veteran. What would you what's a great opportunity that you've noticed in the style of bartending that is typical here in the US? Mm, for me, actually the American bartender uses their strong point which is a presentation. I get amazed so much every bartender is super doing well the presentation. Their presentation is a uh, even for me, I, I, I can't I can't do it in front of people <laughs> like that. But they're doing so well. I I think they have to use this the, their strongest point. And then uh, of course learning the cocktail. Maybe just as a bartender, everyone just know how to study, how to learn some skills, some palette. But no, it's most important thing. The for me, I I'm just thinking my techniques the one of the strongest point for me. I'm gonna use this skill. Perfect. to the world and and would that be just for competitions or is this feedback also for like behind the bar would you say it's the same thing or is it uh, actually both both yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so so it's about so as you when you say about presentation you're speaking towards like how they interact with their guests like how like in that mm-hmm. sense for like mm-hmm. the regular bar setting right you're, yeah. not, you're yeah. not speaking towards like the cocktail and how they garnished it or anything like mm-hmm. that. yeah exactly got it got it so if um if we had a a, a young bartender show today is there any piece of advice that they would love to share um, as they develop themselves as a bartender be it here or in Japan mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm, I don't know just uh, the be yourself <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean just a people a good one. No, no I mean just the people people love you w- you what you are right yeah. you are what you are the people love it oh I want to I want to meet the Donnell because uh, he's a super funny guy he just uh, gave me the kind of the happiness. Uh, that's why I want to meet him. Just be yourself. <laughs> all right, all right. You heard, you heard it here. <laughs> Wise words. Be yourself. <laughs> Never heard before. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> you know, just uh, standard <laughs> advice for life. <laughs> standard <laughs> advice. But you know what? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So th- it's good bad. advice because yeah. it's bit advice that works. Be yourself. Don't be anybody else. Everybody else is taken. So mm-hmm. uh, why bother? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So yes. um, Sune. Thank you so very much for being on the show with us. Thank this you. is not going to be the last time we have you on. Mm-hmm. We're going to keep this nice, short, and sweet. Thank you so much for introducing yourself to everyone. Thank you so much. Um, telling us a little bit more about Japanese techniques. 
And um, hopefully next time we have it on the show, we'll talk a little bit more about um, per perhaps the, te the Japanese approach to certain styles of cocktails, right? Uh, and be a little bit more granular. Uh, yeah. That way we have something to talk about when you're back on the show. Mm -hmm. so yeah. That was fun for sure. Yeah, I'm down. I'm down. You're down. Looking yeah. forward to it. <laughs> yeah, looking forward to brother. Yeah. All right. Um, so, folks, thank you very much. And uh, until next time, Asukari Limon. What's up? Sayonara. Sayonara. <laughs> Sayonara. <laughs>